Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you how I mounted a ham radio antenna on the roof of my car without cutting a new hole. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and I've been a licensed ham radio operator since 1995. I don't have any ham radios in my home. Everything I do is mobile and mobile only. Hams know that the most efficient place to mount a mobile antenna is in the center of the roof. Now in the ham community, we refer to our most experienced and wise hams, often our elders, as Elmers. And so a wise Elmer, well, I guess that's a redundant term since all Elmers are wise. A wise Elmer said, I don't believe in cutting a hole in a roof that doesn't leak. And of course he was kidding to a point because modern NMO mounts do not leak when they're installed properly. Still, that sentiment has always stuck with me. On my previous cars, I had cut holes in the trunk lid. My thought was, in the worst case, if I couldn't seal it up, I could just replace the trunk lid if something went wrong. But the roof? That's not such an easy fix. I've always been hesitant to cut new holes in the roof, especially since that requires dropping the headliner and on modern cars, navigating around airbags. When I got this car, I decided that I wanted to use the existing hole in the roof, which is a shark fin antenna that supports GPS, Sirius satellite radio, and Volkswagen's OnStar-like service called CarNet. The AM-FM antenna is actually incorporated into the glass. The hole for Volkswagen's shark fin antenna is an odd shape, a 40 millimeter square with keyed corners. I don't think this is proprietary to Volkswagen since this antenna appears to be an off the shelf part that's found on a lot of different cars. Anyway, the 40 millimeter hole is too large to hold an NMO mount. So I found a three inch adapter by Breedlove. That was my first swat at this. It was plenty large enough to seal the factory hole and it worked very well on HF and VHF. Removing the factory shark fin deleted Sirius, CarNet, and GPS services. I don't use those services, so I'm not, a, I'm not at a big loss for that. Years later, I decided to add a GMRS radio to the mix and concluded that it was time to buy an antenna analyzer that could measure UHF antennas. That's when I discovered that the lug connections on the Breedlove mount were creating a high standing wave ratio at UHF frequencies. I quickly switched to this NMO combination mount by Larson. Not only can this mount accept an NMO antenna, it also restored the GPS signal to my infotainment system. It claimed to be compatible with, quote, virtually any antenna from 27 megahertz to six gigahertz. However, I discovered that to be untrue. Only my half wave antennas would tune. I took the mount apart and discovered that inside it's made out of plastic. In short, there was no direct electrical bond between the NMO mount and the body of the car. The lack of metal mounting restricted me to using half wave, no ground plane antennas. Half wave antennas satisfy my needs the vast majority of the time, but sometimes I prefer to use my 5 8 wave or even a 7 8 wave antenna. Sometimes I even prefer to go with a smaller antenna, a quarter wave antenna, for a discreet look. All of those antennas require a ground plane or an electrical bond to the car, as do my 6 meter and 10 meter antennas. I also discovered a small problem when I installed this mount. It's 2 inches wide, which is only a millimeter or two wider than the diagonal measurement of the 40 millimeter hole. That compelled me to use a plate between the roof and this mount to cover the difference and prevent leaks. Later, I discovered this mount by Electro Magwave. One of my viewers had asked me my opinion of it. I had, had never seen it before. While looking over the specs, I noticed that it's about a quarter inch wider than the Larson mount. That alone compelled me to give it a shot for myself. Upon its arrival, I was very pleased to find that it was made entirely of metal with the exception of the radome over the GPS antenna. That meant I could eliminate the adapter plate that I had been using. Oh, I forgot to mention that both the Larson mount and this EM mount are made to install in a three quarter inch hole. I use a three quarter inch fender washer under the mount under the roof to effectively clamp this mount to the car's roof and I still achieve an electrical bond that way. 
This mount is specified for antennas between 30 megahertz and 1 gigahertz as a minimum. I found it would tune just fine with all of my antennas and it even tunes my ATAS 120A, Yaesu's automatic tuning antenna system for HF. Obviously I don't need the ATAS to work HF because I have a Scorpion HF antenna, but it's good to have options. Like the Larson mount, this electromagwave mount restores the GPS signal to my infotainment system. I ordered the mount from the antenna farm, had them trim the cables to 24 inches, and then install SMA connectors. For the GPS cable, I ordered an SMA male to Fakra C male adapter from Amazon, which allowed me to connect the combination mount directly to the car's factory GPS cable. My car does not have factory navigation, but having the GPS signal allows my compass to work and keeps my clock accurate. It's nice to have it restored, even though I hardly ever notice it. For my choice of antenna, I have a wide variety. I usually prefer to have one of my wideband antennas mounted now that I have a GMRS radio and a switch to connect it to this antenna port. Today, I have a Diamond NR73B NMO mounted. Sometimes I mount a smaller Tram 1181, it's a quarter wave antenna, or maybe a Comet CA2X4SR NMO. All of these antennas cover two meters, fire and rescue, 70 centimeters, the weather band, and the GMRS band. So they're very wide banded. Again, it all depends on what I want or expect on the road. Now this entire time that I've been talking, you've probably been wondering what this is. Check out my WeBoost video and you'll see that I have a trucker version with a high gain antenna that mounts to my roof rack. The WeBoost is a cellular signal amplifier. I usually don't have a need to boost cell signals where I live, but I decided that I wanted to have the option even when I don't have my roof rack mounted. So I got this smaller mag mount. I've broken some of the mounting rules in that it's closer to the edge of the roof and closer to another antenna than what the directions specify, but it still works about as good as the trucker version. Let me know if you have any questions about this antenna mount. There's not a lot of information on YouTube about these and ways to adapt NMO antennas to our cars. I have a full write-up on my website that may have details that I forgot to mention here. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.